Welcome back. We've been working through problem 528. In part one of the video, we learned the high-low method and we estimated our cost formula y equals mx plus b using the high-low method. In part b, we plotted this on a graph and did the scatter graph method. Now in part C, we're going to use Excel to do a least squares regression. At the very end of the video, I'll show you how I do this if I had to do it by hand, but I honestly, I wouldn't want to. Doing a least squares regression by hand is just tedious. It's not that hard, but it is tedious. There's lots of steps, but I'll show you those steps at the end of the video for those that need it. But if you're just wanting to do a least squares regression, the simplest way, uh, spreadsheet software is the way to go. So I've loaded this data, this cost data into an Excel file and I've put it on my website. You can download it there. So tonybell.com, you click on templates and scroll down in MA mod five Excel data, that one, click that to download it. I've already got it open here. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Oops. Here's the data. So that it's got 52A, 52B, 53, and so on, but we're we're looking at 52. So the simplest way to do this, I'll, I'll show you two ways. I, I think the easiest, quickest way is we're looking for y equals mx plus b, right? Y equals mx plus b. And there's two kind of quick ways to get at it. First way is you go, okay, well, what we need is the slope, the M and the intercept, the B, and Excel has functions for that. So you go slope equals slope, and it says known Ys. Well, Ys are the shipping cost, comma, known Xs. So you just highlight your Ys, you highlight your Xs, you hit enter. That's the slope. So that's the M. So that's our M. And what's our B? Well, you do the exact same thing, but this time you type intercept. So equals intercept bracket, known Y's, comma, known X's, close bracket, and that's our B. So Y equals MX plus B, Y equals 8.105X plus uh, 396.49. That's the formula, we've done it. So there you go. I actually don't do it this way though. I like to see the graph. So I tell Excel to make a graph. Here's how you tell Excel to make a graph. You highlight your data, you say insert, and then there's charts here and it's this one. We're looking for a scatter graph and you can see it's a scatter graph. So there's our scatter graph, lovely scatter graph. And it's actually very similar to the one that we drew by hand. And now I just want Excel to like draw a line. So I click on the data, I right click, I say add a trend line. And Excel adds a trend line. And on it, I can just say set inter, not set intercept, rather display equation on chart. And that's the information I was looking for, right? Here's the number y equals 8.1x plus 396 it's the same right like it's it's the number we got there y equals 8.1x plus 396.49 and so that's my answer right that is the answer and you know good news was we did a good job on our scatter graph we don't i don't always do so well but you can see my scatter graph answer quite close to the better answer here, the least squares regression method answer. So it's not that hard when you get Excel to do the work. Um, we'll do part D and then I'll show you how, if I had to do that least squares regression by hand, I'll show you how I would do it and the math behind it. So are there any factors other than the number of factors is shipped, so I'm doing D, uh, that may contribute to a variation in shipping cost? Yes, there are a number of factors. Uh, so when I ask a question like this, I'm just looking for students to give a plausible reason, right? I'm not looking for perfection here, but I, here's the reasons that are coming to my mind. What could cause shipping costs to go up? Well, the distance shipped. Maybe you uh, have a customer that's in Tokyo and you've been normally shipping just, you know, in your region and all of a sudden you got to ship around the world. Like that would cause the cost to go up. Fuel costs, you know, oil costs going up. Well, the shipping costs are going up. 
maybe even minimum wage is changing and the shipper therefore has to raise their wages and, and therefore prices go up. That's a possibility. Maybe that's a longer shot. Could be weather. <laughs> weather can screw with shipping, make it slower. Anyway, I, I think fuel cost immediately comes to mind and shipping distance, I think are great answers. The other two, maybe I'm stretching, but I would accept those as answers. But I'm just looking for like students to spitball a reason that this might have happened. Okay, I think at this point, if you don't want to work through the regression by hand, I think you should say goodbye. I think, you know, smash the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, uh, share with your friends, whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you're a hardcore person that wants the math, let's do the math of the regression by hand. I, I say by hand, I'm going to do it in Excel, but I'm not going to make Excel do the work. I'm going to do the work myself. So let me put the chart title down there. I'll move this uh, maybe down just a touch, get it because I want to work here. So the first thing you need is averages. And, and let's remember, number of packages shipped, before I do that, is our X variable, right? If we're thinking of X and Y. And shipping cost, of course, is our Y variable. I just want to remind you of that. Okay, so I need my average X and I need my average Y. So, oops, averages. And to do it in Excel, I take an average. Now, again, if I had to do this by hand, I could do an average. You add the six numbers up, you divide by six, you would get that number, but Excel makes it quicker. Now I wanna know the difference between any X item and the average, how, what the dispersion is uh, between the two. So we take uh, X minus average X. And what do I mean by that? Well, again, 100 minus 112, right? So it's negative 12, and we do use a negative number. Uh, 120 minus 112, and I guess I can fill this down in Excel. I need to put dollar signs to lock in the formula, uh, and we fill down, and there you go, right? So 125 minus 112 is 12.5, and so on. Okay, X minus average X. Now I need to do the same thing with my Y, minus average why and we're just getting an idea for the variability and the distance from that average of each item uh so again y minus average y equals this minus this so 108 uh i don't like the format here let's see can i change this oh i gotta change this cell to uh format cells general that's what i'm looking for um Okay, so let me put dollar signs here and fill this one down. Oh, it, it changed. <laughs> like, I, I just told it to not do this. Uh, format cells. General. Yeah, that's all I'm looking for. Okay, there we go. So we got our Y minus average Y. And again, that's to get the sort of the distance between each number and the average. Now, here's where... I'm not a mathematician. I know what to do, but I kind of don't deeply understand the why. We have to do uh, column D squared. That's the next one. Uh, wrap text here, column D squared. And then the next column is column D times column E. And again, it's like, a math professor might be able to give you deep intellectual reasons as to why I just know, oh, we're doing aggression. This is what we do. So equals that squared. So column D squared, I can fill that down. And then column uh, D times column E, and we fill that one down. And you know, I, I said, I'm going to show you how to do this by hand. I know this isn't being done by hand. I could do all this in a calculator, right? This is not hard math. It would just take a few more minutes. And I, I don't want to spend that time. <laughs> I don't, I, I worry I'm wasting the time. Uh, so now we need totals. I have vivid memories of learning about this in school and my professor saying, you take the sum of the square differences. And that's what we're doing here, right? We're taking the sum here. So sum this up, 118.57, we sum this one up. And then take this number, which did involve our Y variable. This one only involved X's, this one involved Y's. Take this one divided by that one and you get the slope. So the M, 
is going to be this number divided by that number 8.105263 and you can see that's what we had got just when we did the slope calculation earlier so there's the slope how do I get the, oops, sorry, that's, I gotta fill this, we're not fill this down, but pull it down. How do I get the B? Well, the B, I'm doing Y equals MX plus B, and we just plug in the averages for the average X and the average Y. We plug those in as the X and the Y, and we can solve for B, because again, we know the formula for a line is Y equals MX plus B, and if we use the y, we know it's 1308 point blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's get a couple decimals here. 1308.333 equals m 8.1 x. Oh, no, wait, we know x 112.5 plus b right so now we just have to solve for b doing algebra so equals uh 1308.3333 actually i can just use the, the actual number 1308.33333 uh, minus 8.1 times 112. Uh, so that's what B equals. Let's see what it equals. 396.49. And look, we got that earlier, 396.49. So that's how you, you could do that by hand if you were sort of forced to or, or had to for your class. It's long, right? It's a pretty tedious process to do in a calculator. It was long and tedious in Excel. Uh, I think I could do it more quickly in Excel if I wasn't explaining each step. But anyway, we've, we've done it now. And I, I do hope this video helped. If you made it to the end, for goodness sakes, good for you. That's uh, I'm impressed. Uh, I think most people will have left once we started doing it by hand. But now you know how to do a uh, uh, a least squares regression by hand. I do hope the video helped. And if it helped you, I hope you'll help me. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Goodbye. The next video in our series is right up here. And if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.